The animals on this list are gone, but not forgotten. At least not by conservationists. I had no idea some of these things existed myself, but sometimes what we think is gone isn't gone for good. I'm your host James, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 extinct creatures from ancient history scientists are attempting to bring back to life. And we're kicking off the list with aurochs. In the ancient days, there was a huge cattle species called the aurochs. They roamed around Eurasia to North Africa, but as humans came into the picture, they started disappearing. By Roman times, only the European aurochs were left, and they eventually bit the dust in 1627, gone forever. Then came the 1930s, and a couple of folks named Heinz and Lutz Heck thought they could play Mother Nature and possibly bring the aurochs back. They ended up getting something close-ish called Heck cattle. Uh, jump to today, though, there are a few groups, the Tauros Program, the Taurus Project, and the Urus Project, all trying to revive the aurochs. The first two are using selective breeding, but the Urus Project, on the other hand, is going high tech, using gene editing in the hopes of resurrecting the species. And at number nine on our list is the quagga. The quagga were a subspecies of zebra on the southern tip of Africa. They were hunted to extinction finally dying out in 1883. Now, let's jump to 1980. Some clever minds set out to bring the species back. Scientists delved into the DNA, and this was when it was first discovered that the quagga were actually a subspecies of the plains. That was the green light they needed, and in 1987, they launched the quagga project in South Africa. They chose nine zebras, the ones that shared traits with the quagga, and it brought them to a special breeding camp. Uh, they didn't stop there. More zebras were selected, each for their quagga-like qualities and brought into the program. As the years passed, many baby zebras were born and something amazing happened. They got results. Six of these zebras turned out to be incredibly close to the original quagga. They weren't quite there yet, but they were similar and they earned their own special title, Rao Quaggas. Next up, we have the thylacine, aka the Tasmanian tiger. Now, this critter was like a mix of a wolf, and a kangaroo with like a striped pattern going on. They look really cool. They were native to Tasmania, an island state of Australia, and they were the largest known carnivorous uh, marsupials of modern times. Sadly though, humans weren't too friendly to them and they went extinct in the 20th century. Fast forward to 2017, and scientists are trying to make up for humanity's mistakes. They managed to pull off something pretty amazing. They decoded the full nuclear genome of the thylacine. Andrew J. Pask from the University of Melbourne said the next move would be to create a fully functioning thylacine genome. It's gonna take some serious time and research, but scientists are saying they might be able to pull it off and bring the thylacine back from the dead by 2027. It really helps with the species that they were around not too long ago. I think the last one died in like, I don't know, 1930 something, if I'm correct. Number seven though, we have the woolly rhinoceros. As you could probably imagine, the woolly rhinoceros resembled modern rhinoceroses, but with fur. These were primarily found in the Mammoth Steppe, a cold and dry grassland ecosystem stretched across northern Eurasia and North America during the Ice Age. It became extinct around 10,000 years ago. As the Earth warmed at the ends of the last Ice Age, the Mammoth Steppe began to disappear, leading to a decline in the rhinoceros' food sources. Early humans also hunted these animals for their meat, their bones, and their hides. In recent years, advances in genetic engineering and cloning technologies have led to the possibility of bringing the woolly rhinoceros back. Scientists have been exploring the idea of using genetic material from preserved specimens to recreate them. One potential method for bringing back the woolly rhinoceros involves extracting DNA from well-preserved specimens, like a carcass found in permafrost, for example. Scientists could then sequence the genome of the woolly rhinoceros and compare it to the genomes of its closest living relatives, of course, your standard rhinoceros, and to then identify the specific genetic differences and go from there. Next on the list, we have moas. Moas were large, flightless birds native to New Zealand. They belonged to the ratite group, which includes modern birds like ostriches and emus, kiwis. Some stood as tall as 12 feet, making them the largest birds on Earth at the time. But the arrival of humans in New Zealand marked the beginning of the end for these creatures. Due to the moa's lack of any natural predators, 
they were very easy prey. The population dwindled rapidly, and by the end of the 15th century, moas had vanished from New Zealand. And fast forward to modern times, thanks to advanced DNA extraction techniques, scientists have managed to obtain genetic material from moa remains, particularly ancient eggshells. And this allows scientists to study the moa genome and potentially resurrect them. Some scientists have contemplated the possibility of resurrecting these birds through a process called de-extinction. This involves using the preserved DNA to modify the genetic material of closely related birds, like in this case an emu and an ostrich, and create a creature that genetically at least would resemble the long lost creature. And at number five now, we have woolly mammoths. Everyone has heard of the woolly mammoth, a long extinct animal that some scientists have expressed real interest in trying to bring back through genetic engineering. Mammoths were these massive hairy relatives of modern elephants. They lived during the last ice age, thousands of years ago, stomping around in places like Europe, Asia, and North America. They adapted to cold climates, with their long, shaggy hair protecting them from the freezing temperatures. Scientists haven't only dug up mammoth bones, but relatively well-preserved carcasses in the frozen tundra of Siberia. The plan is to take the mammoth DNA and insert it into the cells of modern elephants, their closest living relatives. Question is, why do this? And I guess that's the question for everything on this list. Well, some scientists think that bringing back mammoths might help combat climate change, actually. Mammoths stomped around, munching on plants, preventing forests from taking over grasslands. So the thought is, if we reintroduce mammoths, they might help keep the Arctic tundra in check, slowing down the thawing of permafrost and basically curbing global warming. Number four, the Pyrenean ibex. This was a subspecies of the Iberian ibex, inhabiting the mountainous regions of the Pyrenees between Spain and France. In 1999, the last known Pyrenean ibex female named Celia was tagged and collared. A tissue sample was taken from her for future cloning experiments, but in 2000, Celia herself was found dead, crushed by a fallen tree. In 2003, scientists attempted to bring back the Pyrenean ibex from extinction using cloning technology. This involved transferring the nucleus of Celia's skin cell into the egg cell of a domestic goat. The modified egg was then implanted into the uterus of a surrogate mother goat. Multiple goats were impregnated, but only one pregnancy came to term. The clone was successfully born, making it like history as the first cloned extinct animal, but had a number of health issues. It suffered from a lung defect and survived for just seven minutes after birth. Obviously, it didn't go how they wanted it to, but this was still a big scientific leap. The experiments Outcomes led to extensive discussions in the scientific community on the ethics, really, and practicality of cloning endangered or extinct species. Next up on the list are passenger pigeons. These were once one of the most abundant bird species in North America, but after all the hunting and habitat loss, the species became extinct by the early 20th century. There are currently efforts to revive the passenger pigeon, though, led by the nonprofit organization Revive and Restore. Revive and Restore are studying the DNA of the passenger pigeon and its closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon, by identifying specific mutations in the DNA that cause the differences between the two species. Their aim is to basically modify the DNA of the band-tailed pigeon to have traits more similar to the passenger pigeon. The resultant hybrid wouldn't uh, be an exact copy of the original passenger pigeon, but it would be virtually indistinguishable in terms of its appearance and its behavior. Captive breeding of these hybrid pigeons is actually planned to commence in 2024, and then larger numbers of the hybrids are scheduled to be released into the wild by 2030. Uh, if this turns out to be successful, it'd be pretty groundbreaking in the realm of de-extinction efforts. Uh, we could see the same thing happening with other extinct or endangered animals, possibly ones on this very list. And at number two, we have the dodo, the laughing stock of the natural pecking order. Like no animal in existence, I, I don't think gets dogged on as much as this poor animal. And they're not even around to defend themselves anymore, at least for now. The dodo was uh, a large flightless bird, stood about three feet tall, had a plump body and a hooked beak. Because of its inability to fly and its lack of natural predators on the island, the dodo evolved without strong defenses. And dodos were discovered by Portuguese sailors in the late 16th century. Humans 
along with the introduction of animals like pigs, rats, and monkeys, led to the end of the dodo. The last confirmed sighting of one was in 1662. By the end of the 17th century, they were extinct. Extracting usable... Now, dodo DNA samples are scarce and heavily degraded. Extracting usable genetic material is a bit difficult. Uh, the potential is there, though. Maybe one day this silly bird will make a comeback. But finally, at number one, we have Neanderthals. Yeah. That's right. How wild would this be? Have any other species of human existing alongside us, a species where we were thought to have killed off, brought back to like, I don't know, right the wrong, I guess? I think this would be a complete disaster. We can't even get along with each other, let alone an entirely separate species of human. The idea of Neanderthals being brought back is very far-fetched in terms of us having any real desire to do it. It would, however, be entirely possible. Neanderthal DNA exists in modern-day human beings, particularly Europeans, because Neanderthals and modern humans coexisted in what is now Europe. Not just warring with each other, but also interbreeding from time to time. So attempting to bring Neanderthals back would mean human beings would be the surrogates, uh, which would also be very strange. But that's going to do it for the list, guys. Uh, what did you think? Let us know your comments down below. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.